Hey Floss Tube, it is Michelle McGraw from Made by Michelle McGraw, and this is Floss Tube number 19 for me. It is February 22nd, 2020, um, and it's been a hot minute since I made a video. I was supposed to make it earlier in the week, was my goal. The house was full. I never had time, never had kind of a moment to myself. Um, and my boys like to come through and make comments when I'm either filming floss tube or watching floss tubes. Um, so I just thought we didn't need comments from the peanut gallery. So I would wait until they weren't here. And today is the first day that I've had a chance to do it, that they're not, that I've not had a full house. Um, so it is Saturday. Um, I don't normally film in the morning. So this is why I'm in a different location. I filmed here a couple of times before um, when I did my whip parade. Um, well, my whips and kit parade. And those are four videos back in December. You can go back and watch those if you're interested of every, all of my whips and then anything that I have kitted. Um, so Kidding doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to do that project right away, but I liked it enough to kit it rather than it be in my cabinet. So um, I have intentions of doing it. So a lot of times I just want a new start and I will go and find what I have kitted and I will grab it and I will start it. So having those things kitted, um, you can't start it until you kit it and that's kind of why I do it. So if you're interested in that, those are videos way back in December. Um, you could check those out. They're four parts. I broke them down to make them a little bit more manageable, but I filmed those here. This is in my family room. You guys normally see the opposite wall from my kitchen. Um, the light, because it's morning time, the light is on the back of my house and it's coming in that window and is like whiting everything out. So. Um, I have the front door open, which gives me excellent natural light. Um, I do have a lamp on, but I think I have a lot of good lighting in here. We're in the kitchen today. It's, it's just too bright in the morning. So, um, I'm here. Um, you can see the bottom of my Hogwarts, um, yeah, Hogwarts school one. This is by Country Magic Stitch. It is a collage up on my, sh up on my wall and there are six of them up there now. Um, I don't ever take a picture of them because I took p existing pictures off the wall and I kind of wanted to just see if I liked them on the wall. So I put them on the nails that were existing on the on the wall. So there's gaps right now. Um, as soon as I fill in more, there will be less gaps, which is one of my whips that I will show you. I'm trying to get through so I can put it on my, I'm gonna call it a gallery wall. I don't know. They're all vintage travel, po what I call vintage travel um, charts from Country Magic Stitch on Etsy. And I like the ones that are book, movie, TV show um, inspired. And so I just think they're, they're beautiful, even if you don't know where they're coming from. The pictures themselves are beautiful, but I love them because each one that I've done, um, like I've done uh, Welcome to Gotham City, um, I went to go see the Batman movie when I was a teenager. Um, the one uh, where Michael Keaton was in it. Is it Michael Keaton? That doesn't sound right, but I, I think that. Anyhow, it was a big deal, big movie. Um, we sat down with my friends and the girl in front of us turns around and she says, I can't believe the Joker dies at the end. And we're all like, what? Like, did she just tell us this? She did. She's like spoiled the movie. Um, the movie was good for the time. And so I totally forgot that she spoiled it for us. But like, that was just a running joke that this girl spoiled the movie for us. And we were like, I I'm sure she did it on purpose being, being a teen, being silly. But um, yeah, I mean, so that one I did. Um, Hogwarts, because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I have Welcome to Winterfell. Uh, visit King's Landing because I love Game of Thrones. There's also Jurassic Park because that was a huge movie when I was younger. Loved it. I still love it. My kids love it. And then I have Hogsmeade for um, over there. So once I get the wall looking a little bit better, which means I have to finish more pieces, I will take a whole picture of it. It's a huge wall. It's a very tall ceiling. 
To keep it from echoing in here, we have found that um, because we have hardwood floors throughout our whole entire house, I literally have two rugs in my home. One of them is in the family room, one of them is in my kids' room. Well, actually there's two rugs in my family room now. My husband doesn't want the dogs to slip on the hardwood floor, so he got this runner and it doesn't match the main rug in the in the family room, but I'm like, whatever. He's happy. He's um, very afraid that the dogs will slip. We had a friend of ours dog who slipped on their hardwood floors and then had a spinal injury and ended up in the, like a little doggy wheelchair. And he, he loves our little dog. So he doesn't want them to get hurt. So the runner is for that. So, but it doesn't match. So to keep it from echoing in here, we have to have stuff on the walls. So, um, that's my gallery wall that I've been working on. So I have six done. I'm currently working on two and I'll show my progress in just a little bit. Um, so I have been busy stitching and I have a lot to show. So I'm going to kind of jump in, even though I've just rambled for six minutes. Sorry. Um, okay. So the first thing I will show you is my finishes. Sorry, they're all beside me. So I have to look beside me to find them. Okay, so the first piece I'm gonna show you was just finished last night. And this is Royal Summer Huss. And this is actually, so if you don't know the story, let me go up closer. So you get the birds and then the people and then it finishes off with the birds. So I love this. Okay, let me show you the pattern. Well, let me show you the front cover. So <clears throat> this is actually a chart that is in Epcot in the Royal Summer Huss where you meet Elsa and Anna. It is hidden on the wall and there is a picture of it in real life. This picture was taken by Bart, Park Hopper Bart. I can never say that out loud, and um, <laughs> but he's so fun. Um, if you haven't tried him, his floss tube, check him out, Park Hopper Bart. And um, so he took the picture. That is actually the picture that sits in Epcot. And then that was his project. He had it sitting side by side and I took a picture of it and just printed it out so I would have it with the pattern. He um, charted this. So if you're interested in stitching this, please contact him. He did a lot of work and it's fabulous and I love it and I was obsessed with it and I started it and finished it um, since the last time I saw you guys. So his uses the traditional colors. As you can see, they are very close. He matched it. It's beautiful. I love it. I wanted to do a brighter version. I don't know why when I saw it, I just saw bright. And so I changed my colors. And if you are interested in my color, if you wanna stitch this and you want my color conversion, um, leave me a message. I'll be happy to share it with you. Um, but please do contact Bart because he spent a lot of time charting this and that was a lot of work and I'm very, very appreciative of it. I love it. So if you don't know, there are cross stitches throughout. I know at Magic Kingdom and I know at Epcot. Um, well, I know one at Epcot. I'm not sure if there's any more. So it's kind of the hunt for the hidden cross stitch. Um, and I meant to write it down and I'm sorry I didn't. There is another, um, I am not gonna be able to get her name right. She does the Stitching Book Club and I, I had followed her for the Stitching Book Club because I love what she's done with that. Um, they read the book and then she does a pattern. Um, and I love that and I checked out her Etsy and she has some beautiful patterns. Um, satin, no, Sapphire. Mountain, oh, Sapphire Mountain Designs maybe? I don't know, but if you do Stitching Book Club plus Cross Stitch, you will find it. Um, and I had followed her, but I just didn't realize that like she was the one that does the Stitching Book Club. I, I don't know, I, I, I didn't notice. And so I watched, I binged some of her floss tubes, loved them. Um, and then she has a video on there that actually shows some cross stitch that is in Magic Kingdom. 
So there's a couple pieces in Magic Kingdom. So it's kind of like the hunt for the hidden Mickeys. It's the hunt for the hidden cross stitch in Disney. So while this is a Disney pattern, it's kind of a hidden Disney and I love that. These birds up here remind me of Tiki Bird, the Tiki Bird ride. That's what it reminds me of, um, which I think is hysterical because I had never wrote it until like maybe two times ago when I went. I don't know why, I just never wrote it. And my girlfriend's like, oh, you have to go in here and see. And I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody who hasn't wrote it, but the Tiki Birds <laughs> were very funny to me. So when me and my son went in January, one of my youngest son, I took him, I made him go to Tiki Birds and I didn't tell him what it was. And like, he's watching the Tiki Birds. Um, it's more of a show than a ride. And he's like, what? And I am laughing hysterically. So um, those little birds just remind me of the Tiki Birds. I don't know. And I just love these people. I don't know. I loved everything about this and I loved the bright colors and it's cheerful and bright and I can't wait to frame this. The best part of this was, and I will show another whip where this comes into play. I had taken a piece of, this is um, Picture This Plus Heroic 14 count. It's not showing up fantastic, but Heroic has, I think it, it has blues and pinks in it. You can see a hint. It's very, very subtle. Some people said red. I don't, mine shows up more pinky than red. So, and I, but this is Ada. Um, I had cut a piece for a project out of a bigger piece. And this was, I had like two odd strips on it. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll cut fabric. It doesn't matter. But then I decided not to use that fabric on the piece that I was kidding up because I wanted to, and I'll tell you later in the whip, I'll show you. Um, I, I needed to use a different piece. So I had these two long strips that are out of this fabric. I know I'll use the bigger piece that I already cut, but I was like, oh, what am I gonna do with this, this piece? Literally, this piece was the perfect size. So not only did I stitch something that I really liked, but I used a scrap that was kind of hard to, I mean, yes, I could have cut this up and done ornaments out of it, absolutely, but I loved that it fit in here. I have plenty, I have extra room. I am one, I do not play margin roulette. I, it, I can't, I just can't. So I always stitch with three inches. Very, very rarely, if there's a piece, one of my margins might be two inches, but the other margin is normally three inches. And it just happens to be the cut of fabric that I have. And that's the way that it turns out. So, I, I always gear for three inches. And if I go to cut a piece of fabric and there's like two inches left, I don't cut it. I just leave it because it's silly to cut. So I don't. Anyhow, that's the pattern. Uh, contact Bark, Bart Hop, Park Hopper Bart. See, I swear, he needs to change his name. Bart, change your name. I can't say it, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyhow, I love the work that he did and, and I, that was so fun for me. So I really enjoyed that. Okay, the next piece that I finished and the, I only have two finishes, but I have been working on this and I don't think I showed it very much. So Eek Boo Hiss and I did Boo. Okay, so this is one of the times where I think the pictures on the front of the chart do not do the stitching justice. This is a Lizzie Kate number 144. I don't know if it's available because I've had this for a really long time, but Lizzie Kate is sold on 123 Stitch, so you could try there. I do not get rid of my Lizzie Kate patterns, just FYI, I keep them because there's so many little elements that I use. Um, I never get rid of my Lizzie Kate unless I have duplicates. I don't have a duplicate of this one, but I do think it is one of her best Halloween patterns. So not a good photo on the front. I, and it's not that the, like when you look at the stitching, it looks great on the photo. It's just really hard to see, it's, it's dark. So when I get really close to it, like you can see that looks good, but it's really hard to see. Like, look at the cat, like that's so awesome. And I did do him already. Um, I have decided I'm not gonna do Eek. 
it's not that I dislike it. It's just, I have more favorite Halloween ones to do than this one. And so I decided I'm not gonna do it right now. I will have the pattern if I change my mind. I can always go back and do it. But this is Boo. And as you can see, this is on like the stiffest Ada, okay? So the difference between this and say, picture this plus, that's picture this plus. Um, this is, I don't, ooh, that was a bad picture of the back. Okay, so do you want, I'm gonna show you my back so everybody feels better. Ta-da, that's a hot mess. And I don't care. I don't care. You're not gonna see my back. I don't care. Um, so this is Boo. And I adore this one. The great thing about this, and let me find it in my book because I wanna get you the color of fabric that I actually used because I think I told somebody one time and I think it's something different. I wanna say it's nutmeg, but because I'm not 100% sure, let me go back in my book. Um, yes, it's 16 count nutmeg. I stitched this on um, Using the call for, except for, it called for 801. I used 420 only because 801 blended into my fabric. So everything else is called for colors. So this is the last one that I'm going to do in that series. I've done Hiss and Boo and I love them. This fabric is like the best for Halloween. It's called Nutmeg. It is Ada. There's nothing fancy about it. Somebody asked me on Instagram how I got my stitches to lay so good on this fabric or lay so good. And I was like, honestly, it is 100% this fabric. I even noticed why I was stitching that the stitches just looked fabulous on it. And I don't know why. I, 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 don't, I didn't do anything different. I honestly think it was the really stiff fabric and the fact that the colors are popping so much on the fabric is why the stitches look so good. It's just my guess because I didn't do anything different than I normally did. And obviously my back is a hot mess, hot mess and I don't care. And there's some knots back there and you know what? It doesn't matter. So for all those people that stress about their, like if you like your backs to be neat, go for it. If you don't care like me, just know. Like when I finish this, no one is gonna know that my back is messy. No one, it, it just doesn't matter. It, it will not show up. So, um, I don't stress about backs. I know some people do and it's their thing and I love that everybody can do their own thing. So, but just so you know that somebody who's cross-stitched for, I'm 45. I started cross-stitching when I was seven. So do the math quickly because I'm not going to, um, that's math, not cross-stitch. Um, it, it doesn't matter. And I've done so many projects and it, and it literally doesn't matter. So if it's your thing to do neat backs, then you continue to do it. And if you don't, that's okay too. So I am of the camp. There are no cross stitch rules with the exception of your stitches should all go in the same direction. Um, it makes your stitches neater looking. I understand not everybody can do that. Not everybody is at that level. Um, and that's okay. That's the rule that I subscribe to. That doesn't mean everybody has to. That's just me. Um, so I, I strongly believe it is a craft and a hobby and you need to do what you like. And for me, my stitches need to go in the same way. I cross stitch without even thinking about it because I've done it so long. Um, so when people ask like, which direction do you go? And I'm like, I don't know. I, just, I, I would have to think about it. It's the same direction that I always go and it's what I've always done. I don't know. Doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. Go in any direction you want. I think they do look neater when you go all in the same direction. But if that's not where you're at, then that's not where you're at. And that's okay too. So everybody enjoy cross-stitching. No cross-stitch police here. None. So if there's no cross-stitch police, then there's no sewing police. Okay. So on my bucket list was to make a project bag. And let me just tell you, a -ta! I have made a project bag since we last saw. So <clears throat> it's lined, it's chickens, it's polka dots, 
It has a zipper that works. I need to put a zipper pull on here. But let me just tell you that all of those people that said your project bag looks so good on Instagram, thank you. Thank you for not zooming in and seeing my top stitching line. So to put the zipper in, this was the first time I did a zipper. I sewed it three different times. I ripped it out two different times. I was done ripping it out. I was like, you know what? I don't even care. I don't even care. So my husband was out of town and when he came home, I showed it to him and he's like, why? Why are you, why did you leave it like that? And I'm like, I don't even care. I, I don't even care. Um, so I'll show you my sewing faux pas. Can you see? And you wouldn't have been able to see it had I used black thread. <laughs> How do you like that line? Now, they're not all like that, but for some reason, that top line, I thought it was on the back. And then when I flipped it and I got it all out and I was like, oh, that's on the front. At that point, I had already put things together and I was like, I'm done. I actually kind of think it's funny. And so I'm not fixing it. And I, like, look at my, look at that. And I did, like, I used yellow thread for this, which I could have used black and it would have blended in. And I used yellow thread around my, um, straight through my decorative rickrack. Um, I did that on purpose. I had the yellow thread because when I bought the fabric at Hobby Lobby, I bought yellow thread and I thought, well, when am I going to use yellow thread? So I really just need to use it. All the material was bought at Hobby Lobby. So, and, and I did finish it well. I mean, there's no seams or anything in here. I used the Primitive Stitchers tutorial. Um, and it was helpful except for pinning the zipper. I, well, it, it was helpful. Let me not say that it wasn't helpful. I pinned the zipper. I went to go look to sew it and I realized I had it pinned upside down. Like I had it pinned not the right way. And so I had to repin it and I thought that that, I couldn't see it well in the video. So I said, well, let me stop and watch a little bit further in the video. So let me really see the, the way that it's pinned. And then once I saw the rest of the video, I realized exactly where my mistake was and then I fixed it. So that part was tricky for me, but I think that part is tricky for anybody who's doing a zipper for the first time. I don't know. So there's the back, there's the front. And I'm super proud of this because I've never sewed anything before. Like, I mean, I've sewed ornaments. I'm learning. I'm, I'm a learning sewer, learning to sew. I think that's a better grammatical, I don't know. But anyhow, I'm super proud of it, even though it has the wonky top stitching on the zipper part. I don't even care. I used it. So this actually held my Royal Summer Husk. So um, I used it, it will go back in my project bag pile. I actually wanna try Vana's tutorial for the project bag envelope. And I might try that this afternoon, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so let me get into some more whips. Okay, more whips. And I have my whip pile right here, but I need to look and see. Yes, I did work on New England Whale Waters, um, my hair is getting in my way, by the Bay Needle Art. That's a good picture of it. Good lighting on that. Love it. It's beautiful. And here is my progress. So I am stitching this with um, Spunky Jen, and we are doing the Stitch a Whale Sow. So I am changing up some colors and it's only because I did not have the call for colors for the water. And so I'm just using something from my stash. I love it. It is so pretty and it is working up so nicely. I love this. Um, so I hope to get back to that soon and stitch on it. It's a very fun stitch. Um, so that's one of my whips. Let's see. 
Okay, this is Visit Mordor, and I did, um, so I did a thing. So, Spunky Jen has tags on her project bags that tell her what's in them. Some of my project bags do not have vinyl on the front. Um, most of my project bags do not have vinyl on the front. So I often don't know what's in them until I unzip them or I have to remember what's in them. And I have quite a few whips going, so I don't always remember. And so I made these tags and I just used scrapbooking paper and then wrote on it, connected it with some twine. It's easy breezy. I can cut this off when the project is done and use the bag for something else but it helps me label. And um, Jen did that on hers and I was like, oh my God, that is like brilliant. How come I didn't think of that? Okay, so I have folded this down and I don't know why. Okay, so this is Visit Mordor from Country Magic Stitch. <clears throat> oh my goodness. There. And I have been working on this for a while. So I was on page two and I was lollygagging. I don't know why. I love the pattern. I love all of her patterns. They are full coverage patterns. They're four pages. The ones that I've been doing, the vintage travel ones. Um, she has other patterns, so go check her out on Etsy. Um, but the ones that I've been doing are four pages, full coverage. I do them on um, Opal Essence Ada. I didn't have to use opalescent, but it's what I use. So now it's what I use for all of them since they are going on my wall. And this is page two done. So um, I was just dragging my tail over here and I don't know why. I did make an error and had to rip it out. I skipped a color, had to rip it out. And so that frustrated me. And, and I, but I don't know why, because I love it. Um, so that gave me motivation, the turning the page, and I've put this back in my whip pile, um, my like active whip pile, so that I can work on this a little bit each week. Um, I am tent stitching this on 14 count. Um, and I've said before, tent stitching is a love-hate relationship for me. I have gone back and forth thinking it doesn't look great, and then when it's on the wall, it looks fantastic. And my, even because I take them over to my mom's house to wash them and uh, stretch them. And my mom's like, no, it looks good. Um, so it's a love hate relationship for me, but because I have so many, I want to do, I have to tent stitch these. Okay. So I have a puppy at my feet, like watching everything I do. Okay. This is October flame from Heaven and Earth Designs, and this is a new start for me. This is not exciting, so I am gonna, like, my progress isn't exciting. The pattern is totally exciting. This is called October Flame, and that is beautiful, beautiful cover colors. Now, as you know, Hades are full coverage. So, I went back and forth. Here's my progress, let me just show that. It's not that exciting, okay? There is a crap ton of stitches right there because this is 22 count. So I went back and forth about doing this on different fabric because this is just 22 count from um, Hobby Lobby. It's actually one of the few places that I can find 22 count and I didn't want this to be a huge, huge amount of fabric. So I am tent stitching this uh, two over one. I, I don't even think you can see that. I don't, it's not gonna focus, sorry. Um, but, the, but it is, coverage is good. So I don't have any problems with that. I did wanna do two strands. So I wanted it small and I'm sorry, my dog just bumped the table. And it's um, small fat, you know, small count. So I knew that I just didn't want to work with this gargantuan piece of fabric on, on this. I did look. I had some fabric that I got from my Epic Storybook Sal, and I had bought a couple different pieces of large pieces of fabric that I would need a very large piece if I went like 14 count. I would need a huge piece. So um, I looked at using some of those fabric. I had like a green and I had a yellow. Literally, you're going to see two inches around the edge. 
I had a hard time using my really, really pretty fabric when I could get this for $8 with a coupon at Hobby Lobby. So, um, and I, that, so that just made more sense to me. So, um, that is my Hade. I had always wanted to start a Hade. I have done full coverage pieces, obviously, with the um, Country Magic Stitch. Um, and I've done some other ones. I have some other whips and stuff. Um, but I just wanted to start a Hade, so I did. I do have to concentrate more on that because that is confetti, just in that little area. So it's funny because I took a picture of it and showed it to my girlfriends, and I'm like, <clears throat> that is 200 stitches. And they're like, oh, and I'm like, yep. <laughs> so, <clears throat> sorry. Okay, let's see what else I got. Some of these may not have been worked on. Harry and Hegwick. I did work just a smidge, so I will show you this. Um, it is literally a smidge. Harry and Hegwick. This is an Etsy pattern. I think this is Cute Patterns by Maria. I think. I don't know. Harry and Hegwig, if you search that on Instagram, it will come up. And let me show you my progress. It's not that exciting, but I have started on Hegwig, filling her in, and I have more to go, but it's not a super big piece. Um, I'm trying to keep this up here in my pile because I really do like it. I have just squirreled away from it. I have, you know, shiny new things and I keep going away, but I need to put some stitches in this. So this may end up going in my travel bag so that on Fridays I open up our office and it's just me and I go in and do billing and then um, I have most of the afternoon to run the window, answer the phone, and I stitch because I can put my stitching down and answer the phone. I can put my stitching down and run the window and help customers. And even if I'm busy, I can still do all of those things. So if I take the project with me, it's the only project that I have to work on and I work on it. So I kind of force myself to put stitches in a project that I'm lagging on, so to speak. So, um, okay, I have not worked on that one at all. No, and I need to, I actually, I'm going to set this over to the side because that needs to get some love. Oh, I don't know what this is. Yes, I do. Okay. So, one of my other goals this year was to start a Mirabilia. Okay. I have, I have several Mirabilias. I have a couple of them kitted. And I have, my, cha my tastes have changed. So, years ago, if you would have said, um, you should do a sampler. I would have been like, no, I don't, I don't want to do samplers. Um, now I look at samplers and I'm like, Ooh, that's so pretty. So my tastes change. Although I love everything from pop culture to samplers. So I have a wide variety of what I like. Um, I wanted to do a Mirabilia. I wanted to do a Hade and I wanted to do a Mirabilia. So I started Cathedral Wood Goddess. I'm sure you guys have all seen her before. So this was the project that I cut the piece out of summer, Royal Summer Huss. I cut the piece out. I was just, I was like, I was waiting for a fabric order to come in and I ordered it from the manufacturer Picture This Plus. It says it takes five to seven weeks sometimes. I know this. I was getting impatient. I know that, I, I mean, when I ordered this, I know this, I've ordered them from years. I know, I know it takes a while. I was getting impatient. I was like, fine, I'm gonna use Heroic. It's pretty, it'll be good, I'll like it, fantastic. And then I remembered I wanted to try doing skin one over one. I can't do one over one on Ada, so I needed to do it on an even weave. So that stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, well, that changes things because I didn't order any murky fabric, which is my favorite fabric from Picture This Plus. And I'm gonna stop telling y'all that because it's getting hard to find. So I'm gonna stop sharing that little, murky is awful. It's the worst fabric in the world. Leave it all for me to buy. Um, but I hadn't bought, I, w I don't think it was on my order because I went back and looked and I'm like, okay, so that order I'm waiting on isn't even gonna help me. Okay, I have to figure something else out. So I put the heroic piece back. I am debating on whether I'm gonna do our skin over one over one. I'm sorry, one over one. Just not one over one over one. <laughs> one over one. 
Um, I want to, but then I don't want to make this because it's my first mirror that I'm doing. I don't want to make it something that I don't enjoy. So leave me a comment. Skin one over one, or have you done a mirror and done skin as regular and you think it looks fine? Let me know. I'm curious to see. Okay, so this is my progress. And she is beautiful and shiny already. I am not a Krenlick fan. Not a Krenlick fan. I actually am switching it out. There is some Krenlick in here, but I'm also using uh, the, the Treasure Braid. Um, they're, they're literally almost exactly the same color because I put them side by side. I have both of them. Just the Treasure Braid lays better than I think Krenlick lays. My problem with Krenlick is I think it looks messy when you look at the stitches. And so, but I, I zoomed in on other people's stitches and they look the same as mine. So I think it's just because it, the, the nature of the fiber doesn't look good to me. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyhow, this is a linen from my local needle workshop, um, Stitch and Frame in Rock Hill. And this is Lakeside Linen Navy Bean. I actually love this piece. I had this piece in my stash. I bought it. I thought it was beautiful when I bought it. Um, let me see. I could tell you the count of it because I do feel like it's a different count. But maybe it's not. I don't know. Let me look here. Um, in my book, in my book. Okay, so it is 28 count navy bean late side linen. And... Um, I think it's beautiful fabric. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I stared at this piece of linen for a really, really, really long time. And I thought about doing um, vintage country mocha, um, just an even weave Lugana. I loved this piece of linen and I had this piece of linen in my stash and I kept saying, oh, I'm saving it for a special project, a special project, because it's such a pretty fabric. I am not a linen fan. Um, but I loved it and I bought it at the time. And I'm, I'm just, I don't like the irregularities in linen. I don't, I, it kind of drives me batty. But I kept looking at this and this is like the most even linen that I've found. I have other linen. I have a week's dye work linen. Oh, I, I don't, I don't like it. Um, the weave of it is really loose and I, I don't know. I started stitching my farm sow on it and it, it, it was not good. So I took it out. I, I'm going to try to use that piece for something, but that was like one of the very first pieces of linen that I was like, Oh no, 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 no. Um, so this lakeside linen is very, very even. There's not a lot of ear like ear reg. I can't say that word. Now I have the hiccups. There's not a lot of um, differences in it. There, I need to use the word differences. I'm not even gonna try to say that other word. Um, so that's why I'm trying the Cathedral Wood Goddess on her. It is a special project for me. It's my first Mirabilia. And so that was kind of the perfect piece to use. Um, still not an overall fan of linen, but I do think it was the perfect piece for it. I haven't decided on doing skin yet. So let me know if you've done one and you like the skin a certain way, one over one, or do you just stitch it normal? Okay, so I did work on my farm sow. And this is from, oh, that's the thread pack, which you don't care about. Uh, pattern. Little House Needleworks Farm Life. If you don't have this pattern, get it. It is fantastic. And even though it's a big pattern, it's not ginormous. It's only 190 wide by 129 high. So it's a big piece, but not huge. I am doing this on Picture This Plus Murky because it's my favorite. Okay, so you've seen this before. I'm gonna try to show in the light. I did straight down this side. 
okay? So straight down, everything is completed up till here, straight down. So I worked on the tree and I worked on the flowers and I'm filling in some in here. I love this. This is one of my favorite pieces to work on. It really is. And I have to kind of like reward myself. Um, like, okay, you need to go work on this piece, which may you may you maybe you're struggling with so that you can get some time in on farm sale. I am changing up the colors and I am using a lot of the colors, not all of them. I'm using brighter colors and I'm using Be Merry Kit from uh, Stitching with the Housewives. This is on, uh, oh my gosh, it just went out of my mind. Um, Fat Quarter Shop, sorry. Fat Quarter Shop has their um, thread packs. This was an easy way to like pick threads that were brighter. So that's what I did with Farm Life. Love that. We are, I'm doing a sow and it is Farm Farm Life Sow. Hashtag Farm Life Sow. So if you stitch that, um, Spunky Jen has stitched that and Kayla Cola has stitched it. And I think they're both done. And but um, they still pipe in and um, look at everything. So oh, I left that pattern out. I need to put that pattern away before I forget. Okay, let me see if I worked on this. I did not work on that one. Okay, we can just put that one away. Okay, this is... Uh, Shenandoah. And this is from Carriage House Samplings. And I love this one. Love it. I am doing this on 18 count. Um, let me see the fabric. I know it's from Be Stitched Me, but let me tell you exactly what fabric it is in case you're interested in granite. From Be Stitched Me, 18 count. Here's the whole piece. Um, I think that shows up pretty good. It does have some, what I see undertones of green in it. Just light, subtle ones. Very, very subtle, but it's not overly, like it is definitely like a gray piece. Um, but that's my progress. It is 18 count, so it is small. I am loving this. I'm kind of jumping back and forth and doing some of the like trees and then jumping up and doing some of the border. That is a lot of stitches in the border, so it's helping by jumping around. I love this one. Um, once again, that's another really fun one for me to stitch on. So, um, it, and it's, I think it's the colors. I think that's, I think that's the difference for me. I, I like the colors. Okay, let's see. This one is Hold the Door by Country Magic Stitch. So here's another one that I'm doing of hers. So she does have other patterns. Hold the Door, which if you are a Game of Thrones fan, you know what this is and why it is so, um, very touching. So I am doing this as a present for my older son. I've already done hold the door up here. I'm not going to take it out of my frame, but I'm working down on whore door and the door. And I did this on, I think this is um, fabric flare and it's just a snowy, it's, I think it's called snowy. It's the perfect piece for that. Um, I want to finish that and then um, frame it for him that he could put it on the back of his door, like either the door of his house one day or on right now it'd be on the back of his bedroom door. Um, okay. And I did work on my Templar prophecy. Yeah, this is my last whip and this is long dog sampler. Um, and I love it. And I think Two Martini Stitcher is doing a sow for Long Dog. So I'm probably going to join in with her, even though I've started mine. Hold on, I just dropped something. Even though I started mine, because I, I will love to see the progress of other people. So this is a ginormous project, as you can see, by my big 
piece of fabric. Once again, it is Murky from Picture This Plus, which is the best fabric ever. And here is my start on this. Now this is a string, so um, I am doing it in black with 115, DMC 115. And I'm also gonna do a little bit of Petrit, Petrit, Petite uh, Treasure Braid in for some of the chalices. So I got to the red this time and that was super fun to put a little color on it. It's not gonna have tons of color because it's actually gonna go in my family room. I'm gonna try to replace a piece that is over my fireplace that's just a picture. I would love to replace it with this. Um, as you can see, it's a big project. So I don't know how long that will take me. It's gonna be a while, but I will join with two martini stitchers so that I can see everybody's long dog long dog progress um even though i started mine so i will jump in on that and enjoy stitching with everybody and it'll motivate me to do more okay so there's a couple things i want oh i do have one more i i'm starting back on my on my native american maiden and that is by Joan Elliott Designs. And I love her. The colors are so pretty. I haven't done much um, progress since the last time. So that's kind of why I... But there she is. And I'm starting the background right now. Just to break up some of her fill-in. So I don't think I've showed her for a while. Um, I'm doing her on 14 Count Heroic. And that it's perfect. Okay, so I do have a couple things. I did get, I don't know what these are called. Design boards from Fat Quarter Shop, Lori Holt. And they hold your floss. I think Priscilla and Chelsea showed these. And I got one and I love it. I'm actually gonna try to make one um, myself, but I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do that yet. So, it may or may not happen. I don't know. I need one of those in every whip bag, and I can't afford that. So, um, okay, I do have another piece that I wanted to show you, and I don't think I've ever showed it on here. So, this was a rescue piece. Now, I have not done anything to this piece, and I need to probably pull it out, give it a washing, and reframe it. But right now, it just hangs in my bathroom. Actually, it's in the guest bathroom because so I think it's kind of funny. I found this at a antique store. Um, I don't remember how much it was. It was not much. It is not well-framed, as you can see. Like, it's taped, it's, it, yeah. And it's not a treasure piece, but I thought it was perfect for bathroom humor. So it says, no, you can't touch it you already broke yours off. And I think it's hysterical. It's totally inappropriate, <laughs> but it's, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get it no glare. There we go. I think it's hysterical. So it hangs on the bathroom wall. Like I said, the frame itself is not great. I would probably come in and frame it closer. Um, but for right now, it hangs on the bathroom wall. My boys are teens, and so they're kind of like, what? I just think it's funny. Um, I also have a sign in there that says, would poop here again? And it like rates it like you do an Uber rider. I have that in there. Um, so I have weird bathroom stuff in our bathroom, like funny humor stuff. Because everybody likes to read something when they're in the bathroom, right? Okay. I have kitted up a project that I'm going to start in March, and it is from Lila Studio, The Anniversary. So I am doing this for my anniversary that's in March, and I love this. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have it kitted up, and I have my fabric already picked out. Excuse me. <coughs> It's an even weave. 
I think it's oaken. All right, now my now my eye is watering since I'm trying not to cough. Okay. All right, so the giveaway that I had last week was um, Handmade Blessings, Sharing the Christmas Story. And this is for the, um, you could do this for the ornament style. Um, I'm doing an ornament style with Erica D. House and it's Ornament Style 2020. And you hashtag it and um, you just do your ornaments throughout the year. You could do any ornaments. Um, my Halloween ornaments work, Christmas ornaments. I'm doing one Halloween, one Christmas, one Halloween, one Christmas. So I did these years ago and I'm sharing the stash. So uh, the winner is Christine Codwell Smith. So Christine, get a hold of me. Um, my email is made by Michelle McGraw at gmail.com. I will put it down in the comments. You can also leave instant message me on Instagram. However, send me a message with your address and that you won, and I will send out your chart. Okay, so I have a couple of stash things to show you. Um, the, the video is going long, so if you're done, that's okay. If you want to see stash stuff, stick around. Okay, so I am obsessed with Outlander, and I had to get this bag from... Um, this is so much to love and I loved it and I had to get it and I'm obsessed with it because it's Outlander. So she does fabulous bags. I want all of her bags. I just can't afford all of her bags. Okay. I got an order from picture this or no from one, two, three stitch. And I haven't opened it yet. As you can see, I got fabric and there are some charts. So I'm going to go through this with you. I have not gone through it yet and show you what I got. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Okay. Um, one of the stickers came off of something. Okay. So this is a grab bag and I found out about this by searching for some fabric. I was looking for something. I don't remember what. And they have grab bags of fabric and they were in the clearance section or they were clearanced. I, I did not find them through the clearance section on 123 Stitch, but I thought this was a great way to try some fabric. Now, here's my only problem with this. As I'm looking through this, none of these are labeled, but they're six by six um, fabric remnants. So you could do ornaments on these. They were like $3. So here's just a white. Here's a creamy one. And these are higher count, even weave. These all look like Lugana. So just different, different pieces. But these are perfect to use for ornaments for me. Here's a piece that I actually am really excited to try. It's the gridded one. And I actually want to see how easy the grid comes out. So I'm going to be experimenting with this piece. So I'm super happy that I got this piece. Um, that's a really pretty, that looks like, um, picture this plus. I don't know. It may not be, but it looks like it. This is super cute too, where it's beehives. Oh, I love that. So a little bee on that would be so cute. And then this one is going to be hard to see, but it's like got blues in it, little light blue. So that was the Lugana one. Like I said, it was $3 for those pieces. They were grab bags. It's the first time I've ever gotten them, but I figured it's $3 and I'll see if there's fabric that I really like and I find and, and that'll be fantastic. I did get some charts. I got Quaker Gone Spooky from Michelle Inc. Is that not so pretty? I love that. Quaker Gone Haunted from Michelle Inc. Needlework Designs. Once again, loving it. This is the Flood from Plum Street Samplers and somebody on um, Instagram 
this is the other half of the sticker, so I'm gonna find the piece of material that came off of. Somebody on Instagram was stitching this and I don't remember who it is and it was so pretty and I loved it. So I bought that one. Okay. Here's another pattern at the farm from Pickle Barrel Designs. And of course, I like anything with trucks in it. So I'm a huge fan of all those. Truck and a barn. Sold. Okay. This is a this is um grab bag fabric 28 to 32 count even weave, six by six mini stitches. So I don't know if that other bag was the same thing. That might be a linen one, because I did get a linen, but I don't think so. It looked like even weave. So in this grab bag, I got a green. I've got more of this Fabric Flare B. Love that. It just slid off my lap. Um, I've got a white, uh, another creamy white, another creamy white, another white. Uh, I don't know what color this is. It's not showing up well on camera, but it's pretty. And then that color. So some more. Um, I do like that this bag was labeled. The other bag was not labeled. So I do like that I could go in here and find um, a little piece. But I also like that it just gives me a little bit to try of different colors and stuff. Okay. Um, this says even weave again, and I don't know if it's the same. This looks like nothing different in here, so I'm not going to open that up. That seems the same count. I got several of them. This one's not labeled. This looks very similar to the first one I showed you, so I won't show you that one. I'm pretty sure this is where the sticker came off of. I'm gonna put the sticker back on it because it is 32 count petite point blue, white, Belfast linen. So just a piece to try. That was not on the clearance, but I like, um, I call it polka dot material. I know that's not the right name, but that's what I'm calling it. Okay, here's a grab bag of 14 to 18 count Ada. So let me open that up and show you because there is some different colors in here and obviously different. So we have like a gray. Very hard to show this right now. This is a deeper gray. A black, fantastic. A brown. I don't know what this is, but it's like a reddish brown. Very pretty though. We have white and we have some more of this grid fabric. Like I said, I want to play with it and see how well the grid comes out. Uh, this looks like oatmeal and then a piece of navy. Once again, these are not made, you know, to be fantastic pieces. They're just made for little ornaments. That's what I'm going to use them for ornaments, gifts, and just use these up. The price was right. Okay, this is another grab bag. It does have a little bit different. It looks like, um, like that's Barnyard from Picture This Plus. I can tell that. That looks like the only different one in there. Um, that looks like another one from the Ada, but there's some different pieces in here. Actually, I'm gonna open this one up because there is a different one. This looks like the 14 to 18 count. I got three of each because, you know, I'm doing so many ornaments. So it has the oatmeal, it has the grid fabric, it has white Ada. This is different. So I don't know what this is, but it's very, very see-through. Um, it looks like a brownie. It's very, very stiff Ada, like old school, old school. But it's different. Some more of the brown, some more of the gray. This is a charcoal gray. And then here's a piece of the big um, grid. 
So what I'm liking about this is, is that I could try, I could, um, you could use these to sample dye stuff. Um, so I really, really like this grab bag idea. Like I said, the price was right for ornaments. I think these are perfect. Go on one, two, three stitch and see if you can get the grab bag. Another grab bag. This is 14 to 18 count. And this one has a pink one in it. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I think every grab bag is different. I've got, and that's, that's why I bought multiples of them because I wanted to see one, if they came differently and then two, just to get a variety of stuff. So, um, in hopes that they would be a little different and they are. So, you know, you could get a couple of them. Oh, this is a good one. This is definitely a linen one and they don't label the linen one. The other ones have been labeled, but this one is not, um, so I actually have some of this fabric in 18 count. It's sparkly. It's really pretty. Um, here's just a white linen. Um, I don't know what kind of linen this is, but it's really pretty. It's a creamy linen. Uh, oh, okay. I have no idea. Hold on, <laughs> let me change glasses. Oh my, this has got to be a 40 count, is what I'm thinking. It's gotta be 40 count. I, I don't know that I'll ever stitch on that. We'll see. I mean, it's a good piece to try. Good piece to try. All right. Um, ooh, this is a very stiff linen. It's blue. This is very pretty. I like the way this feels. So anyone who is stitching from stash, this is beautiful. Gosh, I'd love to have a whole piece of that. I don't know what it is, but I'd love a whole piece of it. Um, and another piece. So if you're stitching from stash and you have like a small monthly budget, but you need some fabric, maybe you're doing ornaments and you don't have any fabric, this is a very economical way and to try different fabrics. Love it. All right, I'm not gonna go through this again. Oh my goodness, look at this piece. It's red check. That I love. I'm gonna have to find something to stitch on that and I'm gonna need a bigger piece. That's beautiful. I don't know what count this one is. I'll have to look at it and I'll have to get, I do have a count ruler. I have to get out a count ruler. Um, but as you can see, these are all different. They're all different in here. So I got quite a few little baggies. Oh my goodness. Here's another plaid piece. I love plaid. I'm obsessed with plaid and what I call the polka dots. Love it. So that is a linen, 28 to 40. They did label this. So sometimes they're not labeled. Some of them are, but some of them are not. Okay. Let's see what else. Those are all my grab bags. These are fabrics that I actually bought because, well, just because I needed them. Okay, 32 count light basalt splash Laguna. And if that's not fabulous, I don't know what is. That's beautiful. I'm gonna have to find the perfect project for that. Uh, keeping in that, here's 32 count. And it's a light blue. It's kind of washing out. That's more accurate. Okay, so if one polka dot is great, lots of polka dots are even better. Polka dots. Oh, those are so pretty. And I got various counts. So you guys know I am an Ada lover. I love Ada. I will always love Ada. I love picture this plus Ada. I love a soft light Ada. Um, but one of my goals was to branch out this year. This is why I have all of these. Here's some more of the 32 count that I'm using for the whale waters because I used the piece that I had. It was, it was the perfect piece, perfect size, but I wanted more. Okay, this is totally different for me. This is 27 count natural dark red ticking striped linen banning. That was a lot. 
And I have no idea what I'm gonna put on here, but I think these are beautiful. And I need a project to put on this banning. So I'm not a huge alphabet person. If they're in a sampler, I will, I will stitch them, but I'm not a huge alphabet person, but I need a really good project to go on this banding. Give me suggestions. What do you guys think? Cause it's a big piece. It's a big banding, big piece. Um, I d I've never done anything on banding before but I think I needed to. The Royal uh, Summer Husk would have fit on here nicely, although I don't know that I would have wanted the red banding and I bought red. I also want to do a red work sow, like a red work, um, not a sow, red work sampler. So if anybody has a really, what is the best red work sampler that I can do? That's not overly alphabets. I want something else just other than alphabets. So if you know, if you have a favorite, leave me a comment. Okay, this is iced cappuccino. This is a linen. I don't know why I bought linen, but I think I just, I, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to branch out. That does not mean that all projects on Ada will stop. It's not gonna happen. This is actually, I really like the feel of this. Um, Hoffman blend. So I really like that. Um, that's another thing. I wanted to be able to touch a lot of linen and this is beautiful too. It's got little stars on it. Um, this is ancient Belfast. This coloring is beautiful. And I did not get big pieces. Okay. So you can get little pieces like this just to try the linen from one, two, three stitch. And they're not much. Okay, so because I love Murky Ada so much, I had to get it in linen. And I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm so excited to stitch on this. Um, this does not look that, ab like the, the, I don't know, I don't know that I'm using the right word. The weave of it does not look that off to me. Like, it doesn't look wonky at all. I can't wait to use this. It's beautiful. Uh, this is 14 count ancient Ada. I don't know. I bought, I don't think I had any ancient. So I bought it in several different ones. This is fog in 18 count. Fog is one of my go-to neutrals. So when I need a white, but I don't want to stitch on white, fog is a good for me. It's not showing up. There, you can see a little bit of modeling on it down towards the bottom. It actually in real life has more modeling than you think it does, but it's very, very light. This is what I use instead of white. I don't, I'm not a fan of just stark white, Ada. This is my go-to. Fog and Tyco are my two favorites. This is Old Town Blend. I really wanted to see this one and touch this one. This is 28 count 18th century brown linen. This is beautiful. This might be one of those pieces that I said I needed a whole piece of. Look at there. I might have a whole piece of it. Oh my, I forgot I ordered this. 28 count natural straw gingham linen and anything that has the word gingham in sign me up so if anybody has gingham fabric that they don't want to stitch on send it to me no i'm telling you i am so obsessed with gingham and polka dots like i love it love it i need more starts to use all this uh and then i've got coffee joblin even weave so, once again, I still love my Ada, but part of my new year was trying things, a Mirabilia, a Hade, and trying different linens and even weaves. Like I said, I did not like the works linen, but somebody said if you try it with a, a Zygart base, the Weeks linen is nice. I'm gonna say what I have in my craft room is not a Zygarde 
Zygarde base one. It, I, and I don't like it. Um, but maybe I need to give it another try. So I don't know. Okay, this video is going, we're at an hour and 10 minutes and I was gonna share my 4th of July stash um, patterns, but I feel like this has gone too long because I've rambled and I've showed stash and I had way too much stash in fabric, but that is totally fun for me. So um, I'm not gonna show you my 4th of July stash patterns. I will show that next time or I will show another one next time. My goal is to kind of go through my cabinet and show patterns um, that I have that are not currently kitted up that maybe somebody sees a pattern that they just fall in love with and they want to hunt it down and find it. And um, I don't know, maybe they just want to see what I have. I don't know. It's fun. I really enjoy that. Um, Becca from Sambri Stitches. If you don't check her out, please go watch Becca. She is super sweet. Um, she did like kind of show the stash and I think it's such a fun thing to share um, that I wanted to do it. And so I'm showing that a little bit, but I am out of time. So we're just going to say, we'll show it next time. Um, I also have found a new floss tuber, new to me floss tuber, the distractive sti distracted stitcher. Oh my gosh, I am loving her projects and I am loving her floss tube. And um, she commented on my Visit Mordor and she is stitching it twice for her two boys. Twice. I, I can't even, I can't even. She's stitching it twice. It is a full coverage piece of four pages. And I don't know if she's tent stitching it. I think she might be regular stitching it. Like, kudos to her like she gets all of the gold stars for trying that oh my gosh um but she does ornaments for her boys each year um i did ornaments for my boys last year i need to do ornaments for my boys this year and i'm working on some ideas i think i have a couple narrowed down um we're huge star wars fans i have a bunch of good morning maui patterns i and they're already kitted i think i'm going to start some of those uh, make some ornaments for them um, my middle son plays bluegrass music and I want to find some bluegrass ornaments that I could do and I haven't found any. So I'm still looking. If anybody knows of any, let me know. Any music patterns, like he plays the mandolin. Um, so any patterns that you know of, uh, let me know. Um, I would love to stitch them for him. Um, the other two are huge Star Wars fans, so they'll love Star Wars. Um, my idea is to stitch their pattern, to stitch their ornaments, make them for them. And then when they move out, they can take the ornaments with them and put them on their own trees. So, um, if I have time, I may even do more than one per year, um, because they go on our tree here. Um, uh, my oldest is 20, so he is actually currently, um, scoping out the idea of buying a house or building a shop with a house in it um because he doesn't really need to build a house uh, right now he's 20 he doesn't know what he wants um so he's he's looking at ideas but that'll be a little bit before he moves out so um i have time he's still here so for a while um of course the other two are like what is he moving out i'm like oh my gosh please stop um so I like doing the ornaments and they'll one day take their ornaments with them and put them on their own trees. Or probably what will end up happening is when they're single, they will call mom to come put up their Christmas tree for them and then I'll put the ornaments on the Christmas tree because that'll that's, that's what will happen. I'll go, mom, can you decorate my tree for me? And I'll be like, okay, and I'll go do it. So uh, just until they find somebody else to do it for them. So then I'm not doing it. Um, okay, so that is it. Yes, I have done all my stacks. Thank you so much, everybody who has liked and subscribed and um, commented. Um, I do not have a giveaway today. I am having a little bit of problems making sure that my giveaways are going through, like I'm getting the messages. So I, I'm kind of, and I think it's, the messages are not coming from YouTube necessarily or something to my email. So I'm trying to figure that out and I don't want to miss anybody. Um, so 
there's that. But I will have more giveaways coming. I also need to clean my craft room and find more giveaways because I have a little basket there underneath some fabric that I need to put away. And I just bought more fabric. So that needs to be put away too. Who wants to come organize my fabric for me? Nobody? Yeah, me neither. Okay. Anyhow, thank you so much. Like and subscribe. Thank you to all of my followers who come back. Thank you for everybody on Instagram that comments on my pictures. And I just adore it all. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in a while.